Okay, so here we're going to do the last few examples here involving our inverse trig functions. And here I'm going to do some limits involving inverse trig functions. So part j here, we've got the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of inverse sine x. Well, I'm just going to graph uh, inverse sine x here real quick. And to remind myself, I'm actually going to graph sine x first. Okay, so there's sine x restricted from the interval negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Recall again, we can just switch x and y coordinates to get the inverse graph. So it's still going to go through 0, 0. This is the point negative pi over 2 comma negative 1. So that tells me that negative 1 comma negative pi over 2 is going to be um, on the inverse graph. Likewise, this is the point pi over 2 comma 1. So hey, that, t that tells me that one uh, positive, comma, excuse me, one comma pi over two is going to be on the inverse graph. And let's see, the graph then is just going to do something like that. So there's the inverse graph. And now it says all we're doing is we're just approaching negative one from the right side. So if we approach negative 1 from the right side, it says the y values are simply getting closer and closer and closer to negative pi over 2. So it says the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of the inverse sine x, well, that's just going to simply equal negative pi over 2. Okay, so just, you could even plug it in. You're just evaluating the inverse sine of, of negative 1, which again is negative pi over 2. Okay, let's look at the other ones here. Okay, so we've got the limit as x goes to infinity. We've got arc sine. Again, I'm going to use my inverse notation. So inverse sine of 1 plus x squared over 1 plus 2x squared. Well, in this case, we can just pull the limit inside. So we've got the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus x squared over 1 plus 2x squared. Okay, so now we're just looking at the limit involving a rational function. And recall you can use this shortcut for finding limits of rational functions. If the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, which they certainly do, the degree of the numerator is 2, the degree of the denominator is 2. If those happen, we look at those terms, so x squared and 2x squared. You can forget about the positive ones there. We just look at the coefficients. So I could write that we have 1x squared and we have 2x squared here. If we were to take the limit as x goes to infinity of that stuff, again, you just get the ratio of those coefficients. So in this case, we'll be left with 1 half. So really all we're doing is we're just evaluating inverse sine of 1 half. So again, that equals something. We could take sine of both sides. So I've got sine of something on the right. If we take sine on the left, we've seen that those will just cancel out. So I'm thinking sine of what angle is 1 half. Again, my angle has to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And in this case, well, sine of pi over 6 is going to equal 1 half. So that's going to be our solution uh, in this case, because again, ultimately all it comes down to is just evaluating inverse sine of 1 half, which is pi over 6. Alrighty, let's see. Got, got two more here, part L and part uh, part M. So in part L and part M we've got inverse tangent. We're taking limits involving inverse tangent. And again, just to remind you on the graph of inverse tangent, remember there's an asymptote at positive pi over 2 and we have a horizontal asymptote of negative pi over 2. So there's our graph of a quick little graph of inverse tangent. So let's see here. In part L, we've got the limit as x goes to infinity 
of arctangent, we had e to the 3x. Okay, well, again, the same thing. We could say that this is inverse tangent of the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the 3x. Well, as x goes to infinity, we'll have 3 times a large number. So 3 times a large number, that's simply going to approach infinity. And if you remember the graph of e to the x, looks roughly like that. If the exponent gets larger and larger and larger and larger, okay, so x is getting larger, 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 on e to the x, it says these values keep getting larger and larger and larger and larger as well. So what's going to happen is this, this, the expression on the inside, all of this is going to approach, this is going to approach positive infinity. Well, if the stuff on the inside is getting larger and larger, now I just go to my arctangent graph. So it says, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens on the inverse tangent function? Well, on inverse tangent, as x gets bigger, 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 it says the y-coordinates simply start approaching that asymptote of pi over 2. And that's going to be our solution in this case. Okay, so. As x gets large, the inside uh, gets big. And if you put larger and larger numbers into the inverse tangent, it says the y values start approaching pi over 2. All right, so one last example here. We had the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Again, of the inverse tangent, I think we just had ln of, is it just ln of x, the natural logarithm function. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same idea. Again, when I do limits, I like to think about graphs. So if we think about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of ln of x, so let me rewrite this real quick. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of ln of x. Recall that ln of x looks roughly like that. y-axis, x-axis. So as x approaches 0, okay, so there's 0, as x approaches 0 from the right, what happens to the natural logarithm function? Well, on the, the y values on the natural logarithm function are going to just become more and more and more negative. So this limit is going to simply approach negative infinity. So it says the inside, it says the numbers are becoming, how to say this, more and more negative. Negative 10, negative a million, negative a billion. So now I, I'm going to think the same thing on my inverse tangent graph. I'm going to think, well, as the x coordinates go from negative 10 to negative 100, negative 1,000, etc., what happens to the y values on my inverse tangent graph? Well, the y values are going to start approaching our asymptote in this case of negative pi over 2. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I think, again, doing limits quickly, I think a lot of it comes down to just, you know, reminding yourself on graphs and not much else to it in this case. So, again, I hope these, these examples make some sense. I hope they, they, they help you out. Some, just some basics here on inverse, inverse trig functions. Um, again, a lot of it, if you can just remember the basic graph, sine, cosine, tangent, it's relatively easy to get the graphs of the other functions, just switch out x and y coordinates. And then from there, you know, limit problems, just, it's just a matter of knowing graphs. And the other problems, the other problems we did evaluating things, it's either a matter of just knowing the unit circle, or as we saw, it's a matter of a lot of them involve using right triangles.